For the last few people coming in now, we're just about to start. Okay, continuing on with the Agile theme. Um, Agile is all about doing things and getting things done. And, uh, you know, one of our effective doers is Lucas, who I'm sure everyone knows. So he's going to tell us about things that he's done and kind of re relate them back to Agile processes. So I'll hand over to Lucas. Okay, welcome to this presentation. It's a bit uh, unusual presentation. And this morning I... Uh, received this tweet on my Twitter thing, and I, I'm afraid that my answer came a, came a bit too late because, because I only read it this morning. So what is this presentation all about? Well, it's definitely not one of those standard Seaside presentations, but I'm having a short introduction on Seaside for those that don't know or haven't used Seaside yet, so who is that? Or do we, do we skip that? So that's one person. Are there more? Okay, there are more. They are a bit afraid. Who has used Seaside? Who has written a component in Seaside? I'll, I'll ask the opposite. So that gives me a kind of uh, an idea that some people are a bit afraid to show that they haven't used Seaside yet. But I suggest you to, to download uh, the one-click image, and then it's definitely worth to get into a, a, a really quick overview of what Seaside is about and what the core principles are. But that's not the main uh, part of my talk. The main part of my talk is a uh, short analysis on, on what agile aspects you find in Seaside and you see in the de development of Seaside. And since I'm not really an expert on agile uh, development, I, I've heard about it in, uh, in various presentations. I've, I've learned about it at university, uh, but, but I haven't read the thick books and I haven't attended the, the, the scrum courses, etc. So I'm not really a, an expert, and uh, bear in mind if I say something stupid, uh, let me know or, 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 or give a comment, give a hand wave. Um, so um, before I go into this analysis of uh, agile, agile processes in Seaside, uh, as I said, let me just quickly go over, over Seaside. So Seaside is a framework for developing sophisticated web applications. It's not about uh, creating web pages. It's really about creating web applications. And it's open source, and it's available for basically all uh, today's uh, small talk. Commercial ones da down here, and uh, also open source ones. And uh, various famous applications have been uh, written with Seaside. So one example is the CMS box. DoubleDB, some of you might know, that has been acquired recently by Twitter, uh, is another famous example of a Seaside application. And there are hundreds of others. You can check out the Seaside website. Uh, Seaside web applications, by the way, also run on these devices, and you will see uh, a few more pictures of those because I kind of like these uh, kind of web applications that also work well on mobile devices. So uh, the basic... Uh, pattern of a, of a Seaside application already has kind of something to do with Agile development because uh, in Seaside everything is built from components or so-called widgets or widgets so-called components rather. So in this example this is a, is a simple management application for uh, tasks and it's built from reusable components that are used over and over through the whole application. So for example these um, these uh, display pictures are, are with, with the edit commands and so on are, are always the same uh, component that displays the HTML and that connects it uh, to its model. Another cool thing about uh, Seaside is, is the control flow uh, management. So instead of, of having complete complicated parsing of requests and, and redirecting to the next page, we can just write everything in one single uh, method and, and define a flow of, 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 of pages or components uh, like that. And also, again, uh, a cool example of Agile uh, tools in Seaside is are the development tools. So in Seaside, when you are in development mode, you can interact with your objects, you can interact with your widgets, and, and, and for example, you have a syntax highlighting, you have a built-in debugger, you have built-in browser that, you, that helps you to, to quickly develop and, and uh, maintain your web application. 
Seaside has built-in security. I'm not going into details here. And it supports a variety of, of JavaScript uh, um, tools and libraries. So jQuery and J jQuery UI are, are the currently supported one. Um, Prototype and Scriptaculous are went a bit in the background in the past year. And just recently somebody announced uh, an integration of Dojo and Dojo X, uh, which are also very cool JavaScript libraries that are uh, fully integrated into Seaside now. Uh, they are not official packages, but they are maintained by somebody external. And this is really cool to have these kind of libraries available uh, uh, for your use. So that's uh, my quick introduction to Seaside. If there are any, any questions on, on, on Seaside, uh, let me know right now. Otherwise, I just step onto the main part of this uh, talk or presentation. All right. So uh, the rest of the presentation is really built simply, right? I, I read the Wikipedia page on Agile development. It's, it's quite a good article, I think. And what they point out right in the beginning is that Agile development uh, started with the Agile manifesto. So I took the Agile manifesto and I basically will structure my presentation according to this Agile manifesto. So the agenda is basically the Agile manifesto. And to each of these uh, parts, to individuals and interaction, working software, customer collaboration, responding to change, I have a few things that I would like to share with you that are relevant in the context of CSA. So let's just step into the first part, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So the first thing that I noticed here, uh, the Agile Manifesto, and, and basically a lot of literature in the Agile community targets businesses. And Seaside is really not a business, it's an open source community. So a lot of things kind of, of didn't directly fit onto our model. So I had a bit problems, uh, especially in this part, uh, to, find, uh, to find good arguments why we are Agile. And uh, this is just a map, I, you can hardly see it. But the stars are basically the locations where, where most commits for, for Seaside come from. And I'm afraid that I think none of the developers really lives in the same city than any other of the core developers. So we cannot really meet at the beginning of the week and, and do a quick um, uh, stand-up meeting of, of what to do next, right? So. Uh, this is why it, it's really important for us to have from time to time come to a conference here like ESOC and uh, share our, uh, our wishes and experiences uh, and talk with our users too. And that's something I want to advertise. So we, we will do a Seaside BOF uh, uh, before, uh, after lunch today. So if you are interested in the future of Seaside, uh, please uh, come and join and join the discussion. So sprints and camps that we regularly organize and also try to attend with a large part of uh, the core developers are a very important part of um, the Seaside development process. And so here I would like to share a few pictures that Adrian van Os made uh, in Amsterdam. That was a really cool sprint that we had there. So that's the beginning in a cafe in Amsterdam. You see everybody is highly concentrated working on some Seaside problems. Uh, this was shortly before we got kicked out of this cafe because we were thinking do too deep, I think. <laughs> and later on, we found a really nice place in the, in the library, in the public library in Amsterdam, where we basically spent the rest of the weekend uh, improving and pushing forward Seaside uh, 3.0 at that time. Or it was called 2.9 at that time, actually. So that's, that's an example of a sprint. And we would really like to do more of these sprints. And if anybody can host such a sprint, we are very, very happy to, to, uh, to get as many developers there and, and, and work with you or work with these sponsors on, on Seaside and push it forward. One of the key principles, I think, of an open source project is that there are a lot of motivated individuals behind it. And that's also one part of the Agile Manifesto. People need to be motivated, otherwise uh, it, it's not going to work. And luckily, we see that we have that uh, uh, 
quite a lot of, of motivated individuals. So this is the, the core developer team also uh, in Amsterdam. However, as I will show you, the team is not always just the three of us. We are actually many more people. And what is very important for a, for a community is also that there are people that advertise Seaside. And I, I just picked a few pictures that I found on the web uh, of people giving Seaside presentations. These were all at small talk events. But it's also really important that motivated individuals go to Ruby conferences, go maybe to Java conferences or open source conferences in general, uh, and give uh, Seaside presentations. So for example, I've given about 50 Seaside presentations in the past uh, six years. And I think giving presentations is really important and, and, and showing your um, motivation to, to use this product and to advertise this product. Um, also, in, and in the same direction, of course, is uh, that you blog about Seaside, that you blog about or tweet about or what you like about Seaside or even what you don't like about Seaside, even that is good publicity. So it's really important to, to have uh, a presence on the web that can also be seen from outside the small talk community. And of course, last but not least, books are important, articles are important, papers are important, and uh, we've uh, published and also with the help of ESAG in the past years and from the various commercial uh, vendors, we've published quite a bunch of things and, and got also quite a bit of publicity. So that's about the, the motivated individuals. And that fits very well with the Agile Manifesto. However, uh, the Agile Manifesto says uh, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And I already pointed out that uh, we are very distributed over the whole world. So we cannot really do it without the help of uh, tools, right? So our primary tool is, is first of all the mailing list. This is our kind of uh, communication medium. And I would like to share with you uh, the current status of the mailing list subscriptions. Um, a good goal would be to reach uh, until next ESA, a thousand subscribers to the Seaside uh, main list, but maybe that's a bit hard to reach, but it would be cool anyway. And we are especially proud of the 120 developers that we have in the development list. Probably these are mostly people that are interested into uh, what's going on in the development of Seaside, which is also uh, very nice, of course. Uh, a bit the more realistic uh, number on the people that are actually develop on Seaside and that improve on Seaside is uh, the issues and commits list, which has currently about 13 developers. So I think the people on there can be considered the, the core team or the team that, that really pushes forward Seaside. Uh, another tool that we, we obviously use and that probably most of you already know is the bug tracker. Uh, if you want to help Seaside, have a look at the bug tracker. There are bugs that are marked as, as easy. There are bugs that are for specific platforms. Maybe it's your platform. Maybe you want to improve the Seaside running on your platform. So it would be cool if you had a look at it and, uh, uh, and, and give it a try and submit or, or contribute something in, in, in that regard. And of course, also SqueakSource is one of our core tools. And this is where we host all our code. All the code is, is publicly uh, readable and changeable. However, uh, we've, I, I've already talked about this, I think, at last ESOC. The repository is not public anymore, so not anybody can commit uh, any change to Seaside anymore. That worked well in the past six years, but we ended up in, in, in the last years with, with a lot of co accidental commits or, or commits from people that that were, were uh, posting their private projects there because they had the repository in their, their configuration. So we had to do basically a step, a step back there from our agility and, and, and remove the public commit rights. It's a pity, I know, but uh, it's also in the benefit of, of, of new users that, that, that do not want to accidentally commit something. And if you want commit rights, it's really easy. You, uh, you basically ask in the mailing list that you have some cool contributions, 
and, and we immediately add you to the group. It just adds an, an, an extra step for you. You just need to add your username to the, to the Monticello configuration before you can commit. And this is kind of a safeguard too. There is uh, yet another tool that I'm going to talk about, but not in, in, in this part of the uh, presentation, but in the next part. And that's about working software over comprehensive documentation. Are there any questions or comments so far? Good. So, uh, agile development talks a lot about iterative development, right? You have your iterations, you improve the software, you, you don't make a plan from right at the beginning, but you incrementally uh, improve the software. And I must say the, the probably the biggest failure in our, uh, in the story of Seaside is the 3.0 release that, that really wasn't incremental. It took far, far too long. It started at 2.9 in, in Amsterdam or even before Amsterdam and it, it went over two years and we released it last Sunday, the final version. But uh, yeah, we, we, we don't want to, to, to repeat that release cycle and we really want to make the release cycles again a little bit shorter. So we have on, on one extreme, we have this really huge and large release cycle, but we also have these micro release or, or micro cycles in the development and how you use Seaside. And that's the debugger and that's, that's one of the uh, coolest things when I, when I came to Seaside that I noticed is that when you have a bug, uh, you get a stack trace, uh, you fix the bug and you are back right into your application. So that's, that's the other extreme from the large release cycle. You have the, the tiny little development cycle that incrementally allow you uh, to improve your application. And that, that's really something very agile that has been in Seaside from the very beginning. So now the question is, what is, uh, what is in between those two extremes from the large release cycle and the little tiny development cycle? And that's uh, uh, our build tool and, and how we, we are using and developing Seaside. So uh, one of the, one of the key things is that the core developer always use the latest Seaside. So even though this Seaside release took two years, I must say that I have been using in, 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 in production, in commercial productive application Seaside 3.0 and its alpha predecessors and beta predecessors all the time, time basically. I, I, I knew what I had to expect. I, I, I understand that, that many people would be afraid maybe of doing that. but. Uh, it's still a, a, a good sign that, that at least for me, there were shorter release cycles, right? So um, we use uh, various techniques and, 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 and patterns to ensure uh, best code quality and, and good design. And that's kind of obvious in the small bot community, right? Everybody writes tons of unit tests with 100% coverage and runs the, the code critics tools before every commit. And to even make that simpler to use in the Seaside community, we started to work on, on a build server and it was already mentioned several times here in, at, at this ESAC. Thanks. So how do we do continuous integration? Well, we use Hudson, which is kind of the standard tool in the Java community. And that might be a shock for, for some of you. However, Hudson is really a, a well-maintained product by hundreds of developers all over the world. It's an open source project and it works really, really well. And it has a nice user interface and we basically had to do only little to make it work with small talk. And that's what I'm going to, to show you and, and explain to you in the next few slides. But before I do that, I would like to share a, a little story of how it came to Hudson and why we used Hudson. So at the very, very, very beginning, it was me, but I didn't know. So I, uh, 
in, in the software engineering lectures at the University of Bern that I was maintaining, uh, we gave the students project every year and we had build servers that built their projects and run the tests. In the beginning, we didn't use any official build tool, but we had uh, Hills assistants uh, do some little bash scripts that would do this process. So it was really primitive. And then Philip Marshall um, told me, yeah, but you cannot do this with these ugly bash scripts anymore. You have to do a real tool that is also used in industry. And so he introduced me to Hudson and I uh, installed that on the build server and we used that for several years at the University of Bern. But personally, I never thought of using that in, in, in Smalltalk. It was just a tool and it made my life as, a, as an assistant easier, right? Uh, it was by chance, I think, that Janni Hiu, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, uh, picked up that thing. So he saw that I was using uh, at the University of Bern this, uh, this build server and he picked up the idea and he wrote a shell script that built seaside and, and peer images. And he published that on, on the Faro list and I thought, wow, that's really a cool idea. And I took this script, uh, extended them a bit and um, made them also again publicly available. And, and this is what the Hudson build server uh, and the Seaside and Faro integration is now. So I if you want to have a look at the source code, you go to the GitHub repository, it's uh, the URL you can see here. You can download it directly from the website or check it out. It's basically a collection of small talk and bash scripts. The bash scripts are, are responsible to, to start off Faro images and to inject small talk scripts. And there are a bunch of, of, of directories here which contains uh, a collection of small talk scripts to perform various tasks inside these images like loading code, running tests, uh, running coverage, running code critics, etc. Uh, we also have a, a, a bash script that builds one-click images, so you just feed it with an image and you get a one-click image with your nice icon and everything ready to run. And we have a script that allows you to resize the image, which just patches in the image header some bits to, to get it to the right image size. So we have all the tools that basically automate the complete process of, of creating new seaside releases of, of building new new uh, images every every hour or with every commit basically so let me quickly walk through through this this setup that I have on my server at home you can look at it at this URL but maybe don't do it all together right now otherwise it will just die um, that's that's the main screen these are all the projects that I'm building on my server this these are by no means all my own projects right if I'm interested into a project and I would like to see uh, the progress, because it's so easy to set up a new new build uh, target, I just create one of these targets and whenever something changes in that project, I get a, a new notification and a new image that I can, within seconds, just try out and see how this project evolves and how it looks like. And you see, for example, there are builds for Seaside 2.8, there are builds for Seaside 3.0, and when you go into the, the project, when you click on that link, mm, you get various, uh, various information. So what most people are probably interested in is, uh, is the, the images that have been built. So you see that here in the last successful artifact. You can, you can click on those and, and download them uh, to, your, uh, to your machine. So in the case of Seaside, the one-click image that was released on Sunday is basically just a download of that date of the ready-made one-click image here. But if you, want a uh, if you feel brave enough to use the latest one-click image with the fixes that we did yesterday, you can just go that today and click on that link and, and, and get the latest version. What you also see on this front page is uh, various other things. Uh, like the upstream projects, these are the projects in Hudson this build depends on. So in, in this case, uh, this is the development image that Seaside depends on. So Seaside builds on top of, a, of an image with the refactoring tools loaded, with Omni Browser loaded, etc. And there are also downstream projects. So that's, these are the projects that depend on the Seaside project. So that would be 
uh, magnet 2 and then peer 2 that, that depends on, on, on that image. And you get a, a small overview and admittedly it looks a bit boring here because we have here are 2,600 tests and you don't really see, oh no, the tests are down here. That's 1,400 tests. Uh, we added some tests, that was probably on Sunday before we released, we fixed a few bugs and added a few tests, that's why you see this bump here. Uh, but otherwise I it's pretty stable, so we didn't add or remove tests. And all the tests are passing, otherwise you would see a red bar. What you see above are the check style trends or the, uh, the code critics trends. So we have a, a few issues here, uh, even a few severe, severe issues here, these are the red ones up there, uh, that you should have a look at and fix. But that's not really critical, it just gives you an overview of, of how things change over the, over the last few builds. Now of course, if you want to set up your own server, you, you need to know how, how to, to glue these scripts and, and, and all the, the, the stuff that I showed you before into Hudson. And that's basically how the configuration for, for Seaside looks like and I'm quickly trying to give you a, an overview of, of, of how this is set up so in case you want to run your own Hudson, uh, you can do that uh, yourself. So the first thing that, that you need to specify are the projects, the other projects that this build depends on. And as I already said, uh, Seaside depends on the development image. So I have to specify that here. And that also tells Hudson to automatically trigger this build in case the parent build succeeds. So whenever a new um, development image is built, also the, this, the, a new Seaside image is built, right? It could be that, that a parent build somehow breaks Seaside, right? And we would like to avoid that, and that's why we automate that. Then the other interesting thing is something that Hudson doesn't provide out of the box. That's the build uh, when a URL content changes. That's a, a, a Hudson plugin that automatically detects changes on squeak source. Well, it wasn't made for squeak source, but it, it works extremely well. So what I do here, I just point it to the squeak source repository, and whenever something changes there, uh, a new build is automatically triggered. And that works extremely well. It, it checks every one or two minutes. So when I commit something and I check on Hudson, it usually already started to build uh, with this new commit. Now the whole magic happens here, and that's where the, the shell scripts come into play. And that's where you actually build your images. So what I do here is I, I, I call this build script, and I give it an input image, which is an omnibrowser image, and I give it an output image, which is called Seaside 3 in this case. So for obvious reasons, the input image should already exist, otherwise you get an error. The output image shouldn't exist, otherwise you get an error. And then here I have a, a sequence of scripts that are loaded. So the script Seaside 3 could, for example, use Metaspello to use to load uh, a complete Seaside 3 distribution. Uh, Seaside 3 Comanche would then load Comanche on top of that as, as the web server. And you see down here in the second line I have, a, or in the third line I have a similar configuration that instead of Comanche it loads Swazoo because we also want to ensure that, that the Swazoo web server works well. And last but not least, I load in a script, and that's not a script that loads something, but that's a script that puts the Seaside logo on top of the image, that uh, makes the background color nicer, and that sets some settings to make uh, Faro actually usable for development. And here on the last line, I built the one-click image, and again, you see it's, it's rather simple. And the scripts are, by the way, also documented. If you if you just see puzzles because of all these, these, these strange short parameters. Uh, what you define here is an input image, you define an output application for the one-click image. 10 minutes left? Ooh, I'm slow. All right, I'm, I'm hurrying up. And, <laughs> and you give it a name and an icon and the version number and all this kind of meta information that some operating systems use. And then last but not least, you have uh, several settings that you can use uh, to publish uh, check style results and, and lint result and, and test results to, to show on, on the Hudson page. So all these scripts basically generate XML files when, when the Smalltalk tests are run as Hudson expects them. 
So you have small block of code that generates J unit reports essentially. And that's what you get. So you get all the seaside tests here, you know how long it took to run them, you see how, ma how many of these failed, you see how many failed from the previous run of the tests. So you have all this information at your hand and when somebody breaks something, you immediately see what uh, and how the tests changed. Similar things we have for coverage, so that's a coverage analysis uh, on probably not the seaside code, but on pretty parser. Uh, Textile results are, are displayed in a similar way, etc., etc. So, this is basically the part. Yeah. 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 That small int that is 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 uh, fed into the Java check style format and displayed as that. So we we just hijack some some Java check style thing and uh, we feed it into that. So. Um, I have to really hurry up. Huh? Um, working software over comprehensive documentation. That's uh, this part of, of the Agile Manifesto. But the problem is that in the open source projects, people really need documentation. And we have worked a lot on, on, on commenting Seaside and especially in the context of 3.0. And if you have a look at that, it looks really bad. Huh? So uh, the, the, the lighter column is, is, is Seaside. Here is the classes and methods Seaside 2.8, and this is classes and methods 3.0. So it looks like there are less comments. But if you have a look at the absolute numbers, it's actually much better. So there are much more classes commented, all the public interfaces are commented, and, and we've worked a lot on that. So that, that's one I important part, I think, that, that we have to kind of avoid what the Agile Manifesto says, but we have to provide documentation. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that we should really pay attention not to be. I, w I was thinking about something that is not politically correct. Um, damaged, damaged by this idea that oh, I don't need to write commands because my code should be so good that I don't need commands. Of course, don't write shitty commands, but a command is really important because for me as a programmer that I don't know the software, I build hypotheses. And then the command tell me, oh yes, you are a nice guy, your hypotheses are true. So this means that that, reinverse, that reinforced my learning. And I said, oh yes, that's cool. Recently, I was browsing some, some code of, sm of uh, Joseph, for example. And one student of mine told me, oh wow, that's cool, every method have a command. Of course, not the accessors and things like that. And I think that, I think that this uh, this motto is bad. Okay, thanks. Okay, and and in the same in the same spirit, we also worked on on the seaside book, right? And I'm not going to to go into details. We already covered that enough. But I wanted to point out that the the PDF that you can can buy on the website works now really well on. on on these kind of devices, and that's how the, the index looks like. You can actually read it on there, and uh, that's how the pages looks like. So we've improved that, we've worked that a lot. We, we constantly also improve the content of the book. We fix all, our, our, uh, all your contributions in the notes uh, panel. So basically every week, you can, if you buy the PDF, you can, you can get also for free new, new builds of the book. That's how it looks on the iPad. And as usual, you get the online version for free all the times for everybody. You have the PDF version for 14 euro, and I suggest you buy that. You can also buy the printed version on Lulu, but we earn more money if you buy the PDF. So if you are in doubt, buy the PDF. So that was about working software and documentation. Now, uh, a short part of, of this presentation is about customer collaboration over contract uh, negoci negotiation. So the first question, of course, here for an open source project is, what are our customers really? After all, we are an open source project. So at least for me, and here I'm probably speaking for me, uh, is that primarily I am my own customer. This can be a bit problematic for a project, right? But uh, 
it's really my fun project and whenever I, I, I feel like I, I, I'm just working on Seaside because I like it and I like to give presentations, etc. Then of course I also have people that pay me to do work as a, as a consultant. And there are a lot of people in the mailing list that have feature requests or suggestions and, and this is really cool but it doesn't mean that if somebody writes something that, that this should be in Seaside that this will be immediately implemented, right? If it's a suggestion that I really like, I, you might have it in the evening. But if I don't have time or if I'm not interested, you cannot really be a customer, right? And then of course we also have the platform vendors that uh, are our customers and that was basically also the reason why we uh, started to build Greece as a, as a platform layer for Seaside to make their job and our job much easier to write, write platform independent code. So, the basic principle is if I miss something in Seaside, then I add it. Or if I think something is missing in Seaside, then I add it. And if I break or find something broken, then I fix it. What is about you? So, the basic principle here is you ask in the mailing list. Maybe it's already fixed and you're just not using the latest version, right? Uh, then you can create or you should create an issue in the box tracker. And you can choose one of the following. Wait for somebody to fix it. That will probably take a while depending on, on how interesting your bug or your uh, feature request is. Uh, the best thing probably is but to submit a fix, patch or change and, and then it will be probably be integrated the next day, right? And if you have something really cool and you would like to share it, we can also give you commit rights so that you can directly commit to the repository as I said previously. So that's kind of the earning of the commit rights. You, you tell in the mailing list something cool and, and there is absolutely no problem. Basically anybody uh, of the core team can give you uh, access rights. So that was uh, customer collaboration. And now I still have five minutes to uh, finish with the last part of my presentation and that's responding to change. And here I thought I would present a little bit of how Seaside changed over the past eight years. So uh, let's have first a look at, at the people or the team of Seaside and that's uh, my trial of writing down the people that committed most code in, 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 the, in the respective years. So Seaside started in, in 2002, maybe even a bit earlier in 2001 with Avi and Julian, later Andrew joined, uh, Julian left at some point and we got support, I joined and we got support from Michael or Michel, yeah, from Michel from, uh, from Geneva that, that did the first port to, to sync some small talk. Uh, later on Philip joined and Avi disappeared, Michel eventually disappeared, uh, Seaside 2.8 that was around that time 2.7, 2.8, uh, Philip and I were alone and then gladly we got uh, Julian back and we are trying now to increase or to enlarge our team so we got a lot of good contributions from Nick uh, that for example did the welcome screen, the beautiful welcome screen that we now have in, in Seaside 3.0 and we really hope to get more people involved so that we can also uh, uh, get it, get out the releases a bit faster than up to now. So we worked on portability, that's also something that really changed over the time when Seaside started, it started in Squeak and Squeak was basically the only platform it ran on and it was never the goal to have it running on all the small talks, right? But pretty quickly it started to work in, in 2003, you can't unfortunately see that here. It started to run on Syncom small talk, it ran also pretty early in 2006 on Dolphin small talk, uh, 2007 in Gemstone small talk, also in 2007 in GNU small talk. Then uh, in 2008, we moved the development to, uh, to Faro. So we are doing all the development in Faro now. It still works in Squeak, uh, of course. And last vendor that joined the, the Seaside wagon was uh, VA Smalltalk in, in 2008 or nine. I don't remember exactly. So that's also one of the things that we didn't plan but that we adapted as it was needed. So for example, we removed the requirements for continuation just to be able to, to run it on, on uh, VA Smalltalk. 
Also, the JavaScript libraries changed quite a bit over the years, right? So, in the beginning of Seaside, nobody talked about JavaScript. That basically didn't exist except for ugly stuff that, that almost broke in all the browsers. But Seaside was very early, so in 2004, there was Seaside Async, which was a Seaside proprietary library that, uh, that was used to do Ajax. And then we jumped on prototype and scriptaculous that was very popular in 2005 and 2006. And in 2006, we also added support for Comet, that was server push. That's something most web frameworks are only adding very slowly right now. And in 2008, we added jQuery and later on jQuery UI. And uh, a community outside the core team started to build uh, a large repository of, of, of jQuery widgets, uh, jQuery widget box. And just recently, we also got other libraries, as I mentioned before, the Dojo Toolkit and, and Raphael, which is a graphics library for, for, for Seaside. And there are, of course, many more. So that's how, how the, 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 the support for external libraries changed. And now a bit uh, more the fun stuff. So that's, for example, the logo. So who remembers that logo? There are a few people, indeed. So that was the first Seaside logo. It was then later replaced in 2005 by this logo. That At that time, all, all logos looked as flat as that. And then when the Web 2.0 uh, started to come up, we, we, we moved finally to, to the logo that we still use today, which I think is, is very nice. Also, some people accuse it to look like a toothpaste logo. And of course, also the website changed. And in fact, I, 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 I like really the, how the first website looked like. And we would also, with the help of you as the community, like to get it a bit more into that direction. Maybe not from the design, but maybe from the cleanness and, and minimalisticness uh, of the site. So that was in 2002. That's how the Seaside website looked in 2003. So it more contents got added. That's uh, the site in 2005. Even more contents got added. And that's where we are today. So we would like to trim that a bit down and, and make that a, more, a bit more slick. But we need definitely the help of, of people to, to do that. So that's, that's, responding, uh, that's responding to cha change. And I'm already over time a bit. If you give me three more minutes, I'm done. So the question now, of course, is where do we go? How does this agile development continue? So just to quickly summarize what we did with Seaside 3.0. So I took that from the release announcement. We have a better design. We have a better modularity. We have improved the code base. We have made it more extensible. We improved the performance and the memory footprint, or reduced the performance and memory footprint. No. But you get it. It's better. <laughs> uh, we have better support. We have better documentation, right? We have better portability through the Grease platform layer. And we uh, extended the overall experience, for example, with the welcome screen. So where do we go from here? Well, we don't really know because we need your input. And that's where the Seaside buff in this room comes uh, or kicks into place. So uh, on our list currently is that we want to fix a few things that from the time constraints got dropped from Seaside 3.0. That's, for example, the isolate construct that doesn't work in Seaside 3.1, 3.0. The light box that should be ported to jQuery, it currently only works really with, uh, with Scriptaculous, which is a bummer. We want to improve the configurability and to improve the encodings. But uh, I think there is some space to, to, uh, to discuss, and, and we would like really to get your input in, in, in the buff later on today. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. And, uh, I'm still around to answer your questions, of course, but I would not like to, uh, to stop the other presentation. I suppose we can take a question while the next group is setting up. OK, yeah, we'll, we could take a few questions, and if um, if Julian and um, Jason could come up and just set themselves up while they're... Okay. Yeah. Look 
Marcus, are you are you answering somebody? Lucas, yeah. I'd like to learn more about the uh, the S unit to J unit report generation stuff. Is that something um, that took you a lot of time? How, what does it look like? So it's basically S unit um, test results conversion to to X XML tags, which, which which sounds like a good idea for S unit, anyways. stuff right thank thank you impressive stuff by the way Lucas, um, just a quick question, somewhat unrelated to this talk, but uh, if you could give us a, a couple of sentences preview on, on what you're working on with uh, Machrit 2 and uh, um, Pierre 2. Okay, there are not too many changes on, on, on Pierre 2 and Machrit 2. There are some in peer, for example, the markup was a bit extended and so on, but it's, it's mainly uh, a, a new version to keep it in sync, sync with Seaside. It's not that it's entirely new, it's peer and Magritte are both fully backward compatible. So there is the BOF afterwards, so bring your questions along to the, to the BOF and talk to, to Lucas and the Seaside team um, then. So, so moving along, continuing with our Agile theme, we've, uh, we've got Jason and Julian who uh, have been uh, sort of trying out new ideas in, in Agile and um, are going to report back on, on some of their findings and, and results. So I'll pass it over to them. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll, we're going to talk about Wolfpack and our experience about what we've learned about it and uh, some observations about it. Um, and we're going to try and do it between the two of us, and of course we're going to mess that up probably. But um, Right, you ready, Julian? Can we use both mics? Is that it? We're well prepared. We just have one word of advice for anyone doing presentations next year. Don't do three on the same e-circuit. It's not good experience. 